let God arise and his enemies be scattered.
Give him all the praise this morning. Hallelujah. What a wonderful Father we serve. Thank you, Father, for the privilege of knowing you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. I trust you've all had a wonderful bank holiday jubilee weekend. Praise God. On behalf of our, please take your seats. On behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Matthew Ashimolowo, and our resident pastor, Pastor Yemisi Ashimolowo, I'd like to welcome you all to this service this morning. We want to welcome especially those who may be worshipping with us for the very first time. So if there's anybody here worshipping with us for the very first time, could you please indicate by raising your hand? Nope, not yet. We are sure that they are on their way and we pray God's blessing on them. And we take this time also to pray for the 10 by 100 initiative that God will bless it. And in the coming weeks and months, we will see many, many more people at this time in the service in the name of Jesus. And now I want to turn my attention to our global family. Good morning, KICC Global. If you are worshiping with us or encountering KICC for the very first time, we want to give you a very special welcome. So I'll ask you, please, if you're streaming with us this morning, to just drop a wave emoji in the chat. And I know the entire KICC Global family will join me on behalf of our pastors to welcome you. Now watch out for those celebration, those clap, those love heart emojis as we welcome you, celebrate you, and tell you how much we love you for joining us this morning. But we do not just want to celebrate you, we want to connect with you. So if you are on YouTube or Facebook, on the description um, box or the overview box, we have put in the link. We would ask you to click on the contact link, fill in your details so that we can contact and connect with you. And for our Instagram viewers or those on Twitter, we would ask you to please visit our website. It's www.kicc.org.uk forward slash contact. Again, we would ask for you to please fill in the contact details so that we can connect with you and know how we can serve you better. God bless you this morning as you continue to fellowship in his presence. And God bless KICC. God bless you, family. Christian Center. Here is this week's news in brief. Limitless. IGOC 2022, August 24th through the 28th. There will be prophetic impartation and spirit-filled revival. Limitless with host pastor Matthew Ishimaloo, Depot Oliomi, TD Jakes, Dr. Bill Winston, Dr. Mensah Autobild, Bishop Tudor Bismarck, Pastor Biodon Batoyimbo, and Pastor Jerry Ize. Live and in person at KICC Prayer City, ME 59QG, during the 12 daytime school of ministry sessions and eight free evening revival sessions. Register now for only £35 for the daytime school of ministry in person or virtual attendance. IGOC 2022. Register at KICC.org.uk for no word from God will ever fail. Be a part of the 10 by 100 KICC challenge. It's time to go out your way and to win 10 souls within the next 100 days. Invite family, friends and colleagues to experience the welcome word and worship at a Sunday service at KICC. Join Pastor Matthew and the KICC family throughout the month of June for a time of fasting and prayer. During this time, you will experience your blessings and breakthrough hastily, quickly and without warning. 30 days of divine acceleration. Join us for Morning Glow, five days a week, Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. And for Evening Glow, Monday, Wednesday and Friday from 7 p.m. Not forgetting Sunday evening at Prayer City from 6 p.m. Please note, 
there will be no Caring Hearts Fellowship or the Kingsway Bible Institute during the month of June in the time of fasting and prayer. The KICC Church Office is currently recruiting and looking for people with a variety of skill sets to help the church grow. Now, if you're interested in seeing the careers that are available, simply log on to kicc.org.uk forward slash careers, or you can email admin at kicc.org.uk for an application. KICC has a prayer ministry called Hopeline, with counsellors who are ready to pray for you seven days a week. Monday to Friday, 6.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. On Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. And on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. We are here to be of service to you. The King's Kids services take place every Sunday at 11 a.m. at KICC Prayer City. Registration is required via Eventbrite. Save the date for the Royals Young Adults Conference from the 22nd to the 24th of July. The theme is The Takeover. The KICC Singles Ministry presents Rebuild. Join us for a time of reflection, fun and fellowship. Come and rekindle your fire for God and rebuild your relationship and network. This is taking place on Saturday the 9th of July from 11 till 6 p.m. Tickets are £35 and free transportation will be provided. The TNT service The New Tomorrow takes place every Sunday at 11 a.m. The venue is Joseph Academy, Prayer City. You can visit TNT on Instagram to view the previous services and to get more information. Join Pastor Matthew Ashimaloa for the Sunday service series Your Best Life Now. Invite your family and friends to the service at KCC, the land of wonders, or KICC Prayer City. For more information about any of today's announcements or more about KICC, you can call the church office on 0208 525 0000. You can email events at kicc.org.uk or you can visit us online kicc.org.uk. We're also on social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Well, that's all for this week. Enjoy the service and God bless you. Oh, good morning, KICC. And all over the world, we welcome you to this service as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We call him the Onisha Iyanu. Ah, we, and he's so worthy of glory, worthy of praise. We count it an awesome privilege to come before you, Father, this morning to give you the praise, to give you the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Ah. We bless your name, Jesus. No one greater, no one higher than you. Oh, 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 o
enjoyed the ministry of Pastor Toby Ashimalo for <laughs> all right from your clapping it's obvious that I should be sending him more you know <laughs> praise the Lord well you have me today you have no choice <laughs> you have a better version you know what I'm saying <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
praise God. <laughs> Welcome to Life Class. We start Life Class with something to make you laugh a little bit. You've already laughed, but I'll still tell you this one. A couple wanted to get married, but they made a, diff a, a mistake in the choice of their printer. They chose the printer and sent him the card with which they want to invite guests to their wedding for him to print. And they put the scripture on that card for him to print. The scripture they put on the card says, 1 John chapter 4 verse 18. 1 John chapter 4 verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. The printer in making the attempt to print forgot the first and therefore he printed John chapter 4 verse 18 and in John chapter 4 verse 18 it says for thou hast had five husbands and he whom thou is about to marry is not your husband they are still trying to convince the husband that is a mistake Welcome to today's teaching, trust in the Lord to bless you and impact your life in the name of Jesus. I believe God, you will be blessed. I said you will be blessed. I know that uh, Toby Ashimlo has been teaching something different here, but we started a series in whole, in prayer city, in life class. I just want to pick from there and continue. And it has to do with 50 reasons why you should speak constantly in tongues. 50 reasons why you should pray in the language of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. The liquid fire of tongues. 52 reasons. I thought 50. 52 reasons. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind, it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Somebody say, Amen. Yeah. Acts of Apostles, chapter 10, verses 44 to 46. Acts of Apostles chapter 10 verses 44 to 46. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Amen. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the body of Christ. Fire of God rested upon the people who were there on that day. Cloven tongues. And they began to speak another language. The language they spoke was such that it convicted the people who heard them. Speaking in tongues is a supernatural ability of God that comes upon you upon receiving the Holy Spirit which makes you to speak a language otherwise unlearned. Sometimes it could be the language of the earth and sometimes it would just be the language of angels. When you speak the language of the earth, it is supernaturally spoken. And the reason for this series of teaching in life class is to challenge you to see the reason why you should constantly speak in tongues. Somebody say constantly very major this teaching is so major particularly during this season that we're in fasting and praying but not just in fasting and praying needs to be your habit your lifestyle so that you learn to pray a lot in the language of the holy spirit so that it becomes the way you pray in fact there should be times when you put aside your nice english or whatever native language you have and just pray in the holy spirit somebody say amen the Holy Spirit took over the vocal cords of the people and they began to speak in tongues on that day. The Bible says in Proverbs 15 verse 4, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life of perverseness. In it breaks the spirit. Listen, 
Speaking in tongues is the believer's tool for victory. Speaking in tongues is your access password to the realms of the spirit. If you want to enter the realms of the spirit, you need to know the power of tongues. No native tongue, no language on earth can reach where speaking in tongues will reach. Amen? So you've got to understand it's not something to leave for a few people. The language of man will fail in the realms of praise. In fact, the language of man borrows from all over the place some of the things which, if you were permitted, you wouldn't even want to touch. The word God in, 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 in English was borrowed from Germanic languages, which is Gaud, which was actually some funny God they used to have. Or the word for God in Spanish, French, Portuguese, which other Latinic languages there? Spanish, French, Portuguese. There must be one more. Italian. The same word they have for God, Dios, Dio, Deus, actually comes from the God the Vikings used to worship, which is believed to be the God that gave birth to other gods. Deus, which now the Greek now says Theos, which the French now says Deus, which the Italians now say Deus. Same thing. It's just a borrowing of word. But you see, when you pray in the language of the Holy Spirit, you cannot miss it. Amen? Is somebody hearing me this morning? Jesus said we would do this in Mark 16, 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. The speaking of the language of the Holy Spirit was the introductory gift that the believers received in the Bible. In, in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. It says, for he who speaks in tongues does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Somebody say mysteries. Somebody say mysteries. So, Jesus commanded us to open this bundle of blessing and receive the gift of praying in the language of the Holy Spirit. It's very important. Tongues are the greatest gift that the Holy Spirit can bestow on your life. And so if you have not desired it, you've not hungered for it, you've not prayed for it, you need to. You need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of praying in the language of the Holy Spirit. It enables you to walk in the Spirit. The speaking in tongues shuts out the terrestrial world. This earthly world which you see with your eyes is a terrestrial world. There is a celestial world. There is a terrestrial world. The terrestrial world from the, from the Latin or Portuguese word terre, which means earth. The earthly world. Sometimes you are praying and something distracts you. Your eyes see something. Or if you are praying right now for a car, your head will tell you your salary does not match what you are praying for. Because you see with your natural eye. But when you pray in the spirit, you bypass your ability to doubt. Praise God. I said praise the Lord. So you need to learn the importance of praying in the language of the Holy Spirit. In, so and why do you speak in tongues? Because it connects the whole of your life. Praying in tongues will connect to the whole of your life. Everyone who prays in tongues have bypassed every limitation and they've gotten into the realm of, of possessing what God has for them. Praise God. So you've got to understand the Holy Spirit is, is not uh, an it. He's not, uh, he's not an addendum. He's the executive of the Godhead. He's the, he's the third person of the Trinity. He, is, he speaks, he guides, he leads. So when you speak his language, you are speaking the language of heaven and you are opening yourself to receive from God. Praise the Lord. Even Jesus himself sought for the Holy Spirit before he started ministering. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth who went about doing good and setting free those who were oppressed for, by the devil for God was with him. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit 
and with power. Amen? Amen. So you need the power. And when he too was leaving, he told the disciples, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, as he was going up to heaven, he said, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen? So the dynamic power of God becomes resident in you, but it needs to be stirred up by you praying in the language of the Holy Spirit. You need to stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Tell your neighbor to stir it up. You can learn how to stir up the Spirit and pray in the Spirit. Paul wrote to a young pastor called Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, he told Timothy, he says, stir up, stir it up. He said, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of, ha of my hands. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but that of boldness, power, and the sound man. We tend to quote verse 7 all the time. But you need to quote verse 6. It says to stir up the Holy Spirit. To constantly learn how to pray in tongues. There are times you don't even know what to say anymore. You've prayed and prayed and prayed over the matter. And you, nothing seems to move. And you don't feel in your spirit that you already have the answer. That's the time to learn to pray in the Holy Ghost. To learn to pray in tongues. You see God gives you the dynamics for which to get blessed. The language of the Holy Spirit. He gives you the dynamics for which to turn your life around. He gives you the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Spirit is so powerful, it changes your life. In the live class last Sunday, and I'm sure the people in Prayer City, uh, they have to go with us through the first through the review of the first six we saw last Sunday. Number one reason why you should speak in tongues, and then take it back to number one, is that it is the evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. How do we know if a person has received the Holy Spirit? In scriptures, whenever people received the Holy Spirit, we saw that they prayed in tongues. Acts of Apostles chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, as they gathered in the room, boom, the Holy Spirit came. The first thing we saw was that they prayed in tongues. Somebody say amen. amen. So that is the evidence. Also, in Acts chapter 8, when, when Peter came to join Philip in Samaria to pray for people who have received Christ, Boom, they spoke in tongues. In Acts chapter, I believe chapter 17 or 18, Paul saw some people. He said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you, have you been baptized with the Holy Spirit? Have you been baptized since you got born again? They said, yes. Into what baptism? Oh, they said, John, they said, oh, you can't be baptized into John. You need to be baptized into Christ. They got baptized into Christ. Then the Bible says he now laid hand on them and they received the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. Praise God. I say praise the Lord. So it is the evidence. Number two, it enhances and deepens your prayer life. Praying in the language of the Holy Spirit enhances and deepens your prayer life. Jude verse 20 says, And ye, building up yourself upon your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost, Building up yourself. Someone say build up. Please say it again. Build up. It's not difficult to build your body. All you need to do is eat the right things. And the body will just build up. But when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you build up your spirit. You build up your spirit man. The problem with many people is that they've built up every area of their life except their spirit man. So you, that's why you find people, they have everything in the world... But they don't understand zilch when it comes to the, to the things of God. Because they don't realize that they are spiritually discerned. The Holy Spirit has to open it to you. Somebody shout amen. amen. That's why, and so if you want your prayer life to be good. Jude verse 20 says. And ye building up yourselves upon your holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. Then Romans 8.26 says, likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities, our weaknesses. For we know not how to pray as we ought to. But the Holy Spirit with groanings which cannot be uttered. Praise through us. Praise God. 
I said, praise the Lord. So it says here in Romans 8:26, it says, we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to. Sometimes we are spending one hour on one little thing why we should spend that hour on something else. Are you hearing me? It's like two pilots, one time, one little knob on the, on the dashboard inside their <laughs> cockpit was not working. And the two of them were fixing it and the plane is flying. They were so focused on that thing and they did not know the plane was already going on a downward slope. By the time they realized it was too late. Many believers are like that. They focus on tiny things. One person abused you and that's, all you, you, that's your prayer point for the past one month. Holy Ghost, kill him. Holy Ghost, kill him. You have all the major issues of your life. Things you need to see God do in your life. And you focus on this person who he, is, he does not even count in the journey of your life. You are like a man with a Mercedes 500 and the little gnat. You know the gnat? Is the smallest biting insect. When it bites you, you, you feel it. And so because a gnat beat you, you are swinging your Mercedes 500, trying to kill the gnat. In the end, you crash the car, the gnat went away. Focus your prayer life. Praying in the Holy Ghost. I hope you are getting it. Number three reason you should pray in tongues regularly is that it is sign for the unsaved to know that the power of God is at work. To know that the power of God is at work. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 22. Therefore tongues are for a sign. Not to those who believe but to unbelievers. Prophesying is not for unbelievers. But for those who believe. So when we pray in the language of the Holy Ghost. And I'm talking not praying in the flesh. But praying in tongues. And empowered by God. Somebody who is unsaved knows that hey, something is happening here. Number four reason we should pray in tongues. Is that it. Builds your spirit man. Builds your spirit man. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4, the first part of it. So I put 4a. It's not 4a in your Bible. <laughs> but uh, number 4, uh, it says, it says uh, he who speaks in tongues edifies himself. Edify. Somebody say edify. The word edify comes from a building, edifice. This is an edifice. So he who be, speaks in tongues, edifice, edifies himself, builds himself up. We don't know the dynamics, but we know the dynamics of food. If they ask you right now, I mean, social media has helped us who were not dietitians to know what carbohydrate does, what protein does, what fruits do, what nuts do, which food to eat, which food not to eat. Sometimes you are even confused. Today they say carbohydrate is good for you. Another time they say carbohydrate causes cancer. Say, make up your mind. While you are still trying, I'm eating. <laughs> but you see, praying in tongues, the Bible makes us to understand that's the way to build your spirit. The second scripture on that is that Jude verse 21 of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Jude verse 20 says, and you building up yourself. So I'm going to say build up. Yeah. Say it again, build up. Yeah. Look at me. One of the greatest dangers church can put you in is that you are no longer, you got born again, they want to make you a worker. And you've not built your spirit, man. They want to make you a leader because they saw some appearances of capacity to lead. If your spirit, man, is not built, you find yourself wanting to serve and you end up Doing a lot of things in the flesh. That's why you sometimes have all kinds of issues in some churches. Because people don't know where flesh stops. Where demons take over. So you got to learn how to build up your spirit man. Amen? Amen. When you build up your spirit man. It also helps you to even discern your pastor. Discern the church in which you are. Discern the word of God you are receiving. That's why sometimes... You look at some places, you just wonder, what are people doing in that place? But because their spirit man is not built, does a baby know one adult from the other? No. Maybe a few times it may know the faces it has seen, and it can be the wrong face. When I was a teenager, I grew up in an area, there was this woman, she, was, she, was, she, was, she, had, she had mental challenges. Africa is not too great on 
managing people with mental issues. If your family doesn't grab you, take you to the mental asylum, you stayed on the street. So somebody went and slept with her on the street there, and she had a baby. The baby's name was Elizabeth. Now, the baby started growing. By the time Elizabeth was one year old, she wouldn't follow any adult but the mother with mental issues, because that's the one she knows. That's the one she knows. Same thing with spiritual things. If you don't have capacity to spiritually discern, you can follow the wrong thing. Is someone hearing me? So I pray for you today that God will truly open your eyes, open your spirit, make you know him. He'll help you to grow in the name of Jesus. That same verse applies in number five. Speaking in tongues stimulates your faith for the miraculous. Building up yourself upon your most holy faith. Building up yourself upon your most holy faith. It's, it helps to build your spirit man. Build your spirit man. Stimulate your faith for the miraculous. I hope they have the right one there. Number five. Is it number five? Put number five please. I'm seeing number four and it's stuck there. I hope they are hearing me where they are. Okay. Speaking in tongues. Could you please flow with me? Speaking in tongues stimulates your faith for the miraculous. Because as you are praying in the spirit, suddenly your faith is rising. Somebody say faith is rising. Faith. Oh, please say it again. Faith is rising. Because once your faith rises, there are certain things that make healing to manifest. Miracles to manifest. And one of them is faith. How do we know? Because God himself is God of faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says... That uh, faith is the evidence of things not seen. The, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.3 tells us that God himself is a God of faith. It says by faith we understand that the worlds which we see were framed by the word of God. So that the things that do appear were made out of the things that don't appear. So God himself is a God of faith. He operates by faith. God speaks things by faith. The Bible says that God spoke the world into existence. And when only the Bible makes sense. All those evolution, evolutionary theories don't make sense. Because when you say you came out of a big bang, where did the bang come from? Praise God. So I pray for you today. May you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm praying the language of the Holy Ghost. May your life change. Shout a good amen. amen. Number six. Praying in the language of the Holy Spirit. Number six, it helps us to pray in line with the word of God. When you pray in tongues, you can't pray wrong. You will pray in line with the word of God. Of course, we know some of the revealed will of God. We know the revealed will of God, general. Someone say general. Say it again, general. It is the revealed will of God that I be blessed. It is the revealed will of God that I be healed. It is the revealed will of God that I be married. But the specific will of God as to who I marry, I have to find that. The specific will of God as to how blessed I should be, I have to find that. So that's why you pray in the, in the language of the Holy Spirit. Because something can look good, but because you didn't pray in the spirit, your flesh takes over. Your flesh gives you reasons. But when you pray a lot in the spirit, things that are apparently planned to be hidden from you, God exposes them. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. That's why the Bible says, we do not know how to pray as we ought to. Romans 8, 26. He said, but the spirit... Praise with groanings that cannot be uttered. In fact, I think verse 27 says, He searches all things, even the deep things of God. They are not putting the scriptures on for me. Uh, verse 27 of Romans 8 says, Because the Spirit searches the deep things, the things of God, the deep things of God. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. So when he searches the deep things of God, you are now able to know. There are times you just may not know why, but you just know. You just know because you've prayed a lot in the language of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. 
So you must learn to pray a lot in the language of the Holy Spirit. There are times for the specifics. Your step may look wrong. Your step may look foolish. But because you have learned to pray by the power of God, you therefore know what to do and how to do it. Glory to God. I remember many years ago we had a lady. She had said yes to a brother that she would... Uh, I think she would, uh, she would go out with him in relationship, in marriage. And then after a while, she began to pray a lot. Praying intensely in tongues. And then she felt that it was not God. The brother was looking for who to blame. And I had to call the lady and say, what happened? And she said, look, the guy has all the appearances of a nice brother, everything. He has a job, he has this, he has that, all that. He ticked all the box, but she began to pray intensely in the Holy Spirit and just, and just decided that she wanted the will of God. Eventually, she felt God was not in it. The guy married somebody else, she married someone else. From day one of his wedding, the person he married, there was a lot of deception. You know, Africans, they love to bring things in dowry, boxes of clothes. He did not tell his wife that the clothes were borrowed. Jesus, man. He did not tell the wife that all the things they came to present at the engagement. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. You know, there's a scripture that says that. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. So one girl was delivered because she's a praying person. In fact, a lot of us in the church were looking at her like, oh, sister so-and-so, she's always behaving too deep. It's better to be deep than be a shallow person and be deceived. On the wedding, I mean, re, yeah, firstly on the engagement day, they brought a lot of things. Then on the wedding day, they told the father-in-law, don't bring any meal. We will take care of all the food. Father-in-law just decided, let me go and support my in-laws with some coolers of Nigerian jollof rice. That's the only food people ate. Jesus. From day one. Then they got into the wedding. After honeymoon, sister-in-law comes and opens their wardrobe. And she's taking out the clothes. Ah, Auntie, why are you taking out the clothes? Your husband did not tell you. Alas, master. For it was borrowed. Yeah. For those ladies who like to see the shine shine. Shine shine bobo. <laughs> you get all the shine shine. We laughed. We, 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 for some time some of us were angry at the girl. Who after two three years. Of this relationship pulled out. She said the more she prayed in tongues. She, the more she became troubled that this is not her future. Man, God delivered. I don't even go on in the story because that was not the only catastrophe from that brother. There were subsequent catastrophes. So for those of you who don't know how to, or you are praying in tongues, but you are watching, watch and pray. <laughs> Christian, seek not yet repose. Hear the guardian angel say, You are in the midst of foes. Watch and pray. Better close your eyes and, and pray in tongues very well. The God, I mean, let me not go on. Yeah, Pastor MC says, No, yeah, don't go on because it was disaster. <laughs> oh, Jesus, man. I pray for every young lady that is still single. May your path shine. May God guide you. That you will not make a mistake and not fall into some foolish hunter's trap. Your children too will not fall into error. The spirit of the Lord will guide them, lead them. And in the season when they want to make a choice and a decision, they will not make an error. They will make, they will take the right step. Shout amen with power. Helps us to pray in line with the, with, the, with, with, with the word of God. With the word of God. Number seven. Speaking in tongues. 
releases a refreshing and renewing of your spirit. Just as the physical body gets tired, there are times we just feel tired. Just tired. You don't feel like doing anything spiritually. That's the time to do something. Tell your neighbor, do something. Never tell yourself, I'm so spiritually just tired. I just even don't even feel like going to church. Ah! You just spoke to the devil's hand. He will now work on you. Extra work. You got to learn how to refresh your spirit by just praying in the spirit. Praying in the language of the Holy Ghost. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the language of the Holy Ghost. Praying in the spirit. When you do so, something happens to your spirit, man. You come alive again. Acts chapter 3 verse 19, 20. Repent therefore, be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. May you be refreshed. May you be renewed. May the power of God touch you. In the mighty name of Jesus, may your faith be renewed, your vision renewed, your power renewed, your grace renewed in Jesus' name. So there are times you feel tired. You need to learn how to pray in the language of the Holy Ghost. You need to learn how to just pray in the Spirit and pray in the Spirit. And you'll be amazed because you have tapped into another realm. Your spirit man comes alive. The Spirit of God rises in you. Grace comes upon you. Shout Amen. Number eight, reason why you need to pray a lot in the spirit. When you speak in tongues, you declare the deep and mysterious things. You declare deep and mysterious things. Number eight, when you pray in tongues, you declare deep and mysterious things. He brings to your consciousness things that are hidden. You stir them up to become reality. Look at what I just told you. It was not obvious. What that guy would do. Nobody knew. I mean, he was one of those brothers in church in those days. Oh, man. You know, we were a church. Then a, a ministry just started in town that time. That was teaching people how to walk in Bible holiness. It was very deep. Very, very deep. They were not yet a church that time. And so these guys, they would leave church. And still go to that place where they were teaching them to be very deep and very, very deep. So they had an appearance of being very deep and very, very deep. And yet he's the one who married this girl in deception. Where is the depth? Where is the depth? Throughout his life. Walked in deception. Had three, four kids, never sent them to school. Jeez, man. So when you speak in tongues... You find, you, you understand the deep things of God. Things that are hidden, they become exposed to you. I pray for your eyes today that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. That God will speak to your mind. Amen. God will speak to your heart. Amen. God will show you things that are necessary for your progress. Amen. Necessary for your future. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 and, 11, and, verse 9 and 10. Says, but as it is written, I had not seen, ear had not heard, nor have it have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. For God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Glory to God. So, there are things the Holy Spirit will search. Now, I don't want you to also be so spiritual that you are seeing and hearing God in places he's not. But at the same time, you allow the Holy Spirit and say, God, I don't want to make mistake. Speak to me. Show me things. Teach me. You'll be amazed. The gift of discernment will come upon you. The grace of Jesus will be awesome for you. And from now on, you will not sleep the sleep of death. You will lie down. God will reveal things to you. God will open your eyes to see things. If the enemy was meaning to harm you, God will expose it. Praise God. That's why you must learn to pray in the language of the Holy Ghost. Learn to pray a lot in tongues. In fact, there should be seasons in your life you just put aside the, all the languages you knew. And one hour, you're just praying in tongues. You focus your mind on the matter. 
but you prayed in tongues. Sometimes two hours. You may look like, wow. You just kept on on this thing. You kept praying in tongues for the same thing. One hour, two hours. Something has to shift. I see something shifting in your life. I see God giving you testimony. The season has come that your tears will be wiped. And God will fill your mouth with laughter and celebration. This teaching will not fall and die. But rather it will produce fruits in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Shout amen. Amen. So listen, when you pray in tongues, you declare deep things and mysterious things. Mysteries. When the, that word mysteries there. Uh, today, mysteries mean something you cannot understand. But in Bible times, when 1 Corinthians was written, and it says, He that speaketh in tongues, he speaketh not unto man, but speaketh mysteries. That time, mysterion, from where we get the word Greek word, from where we get mysteries, mysteries then meant Things that are deep. Today they mean things that are scary. Things you don't understand. But that time it meant things that are very deep. Words have changed the meanings. We say Holy Ghost. Today a ghost is, you know, Ghostbusters. If you are feeling lonely, who's going to call? Ghostbusters. In Bible times in 1611, when the Bible was translated from Hebrew and Greek to English, ghost was the good word. Spirit was the bad word. Can you believe? But today, ghost is the bad word. So, mysteries means something very deep. So, when you pray in tongues, get ready. God will begin to do deep things in your life. God will begin to show you deep revelations. God will begin to solve deep problems. God will begin to open treasure houses. Oh, your amen is weak. God will begin to bring your family into things you could not achieve by yourself. Your sons, your daughters will have access to things that you could not fix yourself. Doors will fling open for your family. They'll be looking for you to put finances in your hand. Praise God. I say praise the Lord. Number nine, speaking in tongues gives you direct access to God. Direct access to God. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Remember that word again? Mysterion, deep things deep things yaro shakabaris when you pray in tongues you speak deep things you in fact you understand the depth of the word of god you begin to see the things that are not obvious it is important for the believer to realize the need to operate in the spirit when you got born again your spirit man came alive before you got born again your spirit man was comatose was shut down, was like in some nebulous place. Your flesh and your soul took over your life. The day you got born again, your spirit man came alive. But although he's alive, he needs to be fed. He needs to be given power to function. So there are people who are born again, but their spirit is not fed. Their spirit is not given power to function. So they are still doing many things in the flesh and in the, with their soul. So you are a spirit with a soul living in a body. Please. I'm not against your nice makeups. But whatever makeup you make up, also make your spirit man up. Because some people, the money they spend on trying to look the, this, this, this vehicle, this, this, whatever your car is, I don't know what body you have. My one is a Rolls Royce. What, <laughs> what kind of body do you have? I don't know what you have. But mine is a Rolls Royce. I treat mine like a Rolls Royce. But you see, the Rolls Royce body cannot be compared to the Rolls Royce spirit man. You need to feed your spirit man, take care of your spirit man, exercise your spirit man, speak with your spirit man. When you do that, you will be amazed. Ah, 
There are things others don't see, you will see. There are things others don't understand, you will understand. There are things people are not exposed to, you will be exposed to them. God will give you an understanding of your world, an understanding of who you are in God, an understanding of where he's... I hope I'm preaching to somebody this week. So the Holy Spirit gives you direct access to God. So when you pray in tongues, ah, glory to God, no, no telephone exchange, no... You are going to God and the devil cannot hinder. Because he can only hinder what he understands. Oh, praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Number 10 is like number 9. I'll just add that and we'll close for today. Have you been blessed this morning? Number 10 says speaking in tongues helps to cut off human understanding. Someone say human understanding. It helps to cut off human understanding bypasses it and helps you to focus on God I told you earlier in your human understanding if you begin to pray for some things you might just become worried you might just say to yourself ah that thing cannot be but when you begin to pray in tongues how God will do it will be amazing do you know there are people who have been lined up by God to bless you there are favors with your name on it there are glories with your name on it there are breakthroughs with your name on it. And in the right season, you will connect with it. Amen. Shout amen powerfully. Amen. So when you pray in tongues, you've cut off your human understanding. You've cut it off. Because for example, if you are praying in tongues, you've cut off everything. But if you are praying in English, something will be saying, suppose, suppose this, suppose that, suppose that. In case this goes wrong, what would you do? But when you pray in, the, in tongues, you don't even know what you're saying. The only thing is you know what you focused on. Glory to God. So I see you victorious. And I see you blessed. How do you cut off your human understanding? 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, For if I pray in tongues, my spirit prays. My understanding is unfruitful. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4 also says, He who speaks in tongues edifies himself. So remember all we shared today. So this liquid fire of tongues raises your prayer life to be more in the spirit than in the flesh. Hallelujah. So let's practice what we've been saying. For about two, three minutes, stand on your feet, raise your hand. And just worship God in the language of the Holy Ghost. Don't even ask for anything. Just pray a prayer of praise in tongues. Hey, Mareko se tarira ma, mera roshani e, lira bo sa ya la ra ba ba, le ira mo se ka ira mo, holy God, holy God, holy God, holy God, holy God. Holy God, Holy God, Nima Teko, Mareke, Recabaro, Shayere, Sandiriba, Narere, Sandi Alaraba, Akayen de Rabaro, Zekayana, in Jesus' name. While we are standing, we'll do number 11. Number 11, you can also thank God in the spirit. Thank Tongues is a language of thanksgiving and worship. It says 1 Corinthians 14, 11. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit. I will also pray with understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. And I will also sing with understanding. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 says, Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, spiritual songs, spiritual songs, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord come on lift your hand one more time and just begin to pray in tongues just thanking God focus on your life thank God for your life 
Thank God for the miracles. Thank God for the victory. Thank God for the open doors. Thank God for answer prayer. Thank God for change. Let him all say and Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And as we worship, build your throne. <laughs> and as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. Father, we give all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration to you this morning. Thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for the things you're doing. Thank you for the things you will do. We magnify you. We lift you up above circumstances, above everything, above all gods. For there's no other God beside you. You're glorious. You deserve the praise and the honor and adoration. Be lifted up, our God, in Jesus' name. Celebrate our God in a big way. Come on. Magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you blessed? Yes. Maybe seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to take the time to take communion this morning. I want to worship God in the communion. And this is a powerful time and a powerful opportunity. You receive a word that had to do with your walk in the spirit. Then it's time for you to connect. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you do this, you do remember the Lord's death until he comes. Let him and examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the wine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege of approaching the table of the Lord this morning. Help us to eat for health, to eat for deliverance. As we partake in the bread and the wine, help us to remember the body of Jesus broken for us, the blood of Jesus shed for us. Help us to remember the one who loved us and gave himself for us. Minister to people today, let like this morning's communion Bring it turn around to somebody's life. In Jesus' name. As they bring the bread and the wine, please partake and then begin to just pray. Possibly just pray in the language of the Holy Spirit, just as you've been taught this morning. Let me sing a strange song. Lest I forget thy love for me. Lest I forget, get money. Lest I forget, thy agony. Lest I forget, thy love for me. Lead me to come. Lest I forget, get Money, lest I forget thy agony, lest I forget thy love for me. Take me to Calvary, lest I forget. 
and the blood of Jesus. Let there be healing. Let there be deliverance. Let there be victory. Let there be testimony. Let someone who came to this service today testify of your power in their life, of your goodness in their life. We thank you. You will exceed our prayer. You will exceed our expectation. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody give God praise. Second Corinthians chapter 8. Verse 9. The Bible says. For you are becoming progressively acquainted. The, the Amplified Bible. You are becoming progressively acquainted with and recognizing strongly and clearly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, his kindness, his graciousness, his generosity, his undeserved favor and spiritual blessing, that though he was very rich, yet for your sake he became so very poor, in order that by his poverty you might become enriched and abundantly supplied. God already made provision for your blessing for your abundant supply but he demands that we learn the power of releasing what's in our hand to experience the supply amen if there is no release of the seed there cannot be a receiving of the blessing but when we release the seed we receive the blessing hallelujah when you release the seed in your hand the blessing follows hallelujah hallelujah I went to preach somewhere on Friday and Saturday Trinity Baptist Church in Croydon the brother who took me yes uh, for the two days as we we're going yesterday I don't know how we started talking about planting oh yeah I think I was probably telling him some of the things I planted in front of my house abroad and he told me, during the lockdown, I decided to get myself busy. So I went to B&Q and bought some pepper seed and uh, uh, spinach seed and, 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 and planted them in his garden. He said, we've been harvesting. He said, we harvested 2,000 round peppers. We've harvested uh, strawberry from my garden. You see, when the seed was still in B&Q, it was still there. And his garden was growing grass and he was busy every day. One man went to mow, went to mow a meadow. You know, he kept cutting the grass every day. Nothing. 
until he sowed the seed and something happened seed remains in your hand until you release it there are many people who are struggling also because they don't know the key importance of obeying God the seed in your hand this morning don't just give it believe God that this offering leave in my hand is not leaving my life it is coming back as increase as testimony as healing as breakthrough so make sure you say a 30 seconds prayer before you give them the offering and then let's give to the Lord this morning with excitement with joy praising the Lord let's give to the Lord let's give to the Lord let's give to the Lord Of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. Yeah. By the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. By the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in. By the hand of the Almighty, by the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. By the hand, by the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, made complete. Now I'm walking in victory. By the hand of the Almighty, by the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free. Delivered and complete. Now I'm walking in victory. Said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Walking in victory. Walking in victory. Got my joy back. Said I'm walking in victory. Walking in victory. Walking in victory. Walking in victory. Got my peace back. I've been set free, healed, delivered, and complete. Now I'm walking in victory. By the hand of the Almighty, by the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, and complete. Now I'm walking in victory. Say by the hand, by the hand of the Almighty, I've been set free, healed, delivered, and complete. Now I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in victory. 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 Got my joy back. Got my joy back. Got my peace back. Got my peace back. Got my hope back. Got my strength back. Got my hope back. Got my peace back. Got my strength back. Offering, confess with me, Lord, as we bring our offerings. We believe you for better jobs, raises, bonuses, finding money, money finding us, receiving increase, incomes, royalties, dividends, inheritances, checks in the mail, gifts, and surprises. In the name of Jesus. We will never be the same again. Never, never, never. In Jesus' name. Father, bless the seed your people so today. Prosper their hands. Bring them into the super supernatural provisions. Let your name be glorified. Silence the voice of indebtedness in their life. Open doors, open doors, open doors, open doors. Let this month somebody walking on usual financial miracle 
Let every dream, every vision the lies follow become reality. Make their vision happen. Make their dreams happen. Make their dreams happen. Make their vision happen. To the glory of your name. In Jesus' name. Somebody praise the Lord this morning. You may be seated. One or two announcements. Bring the service to a close. Bring the service to a close. Were you blessed this morning? Let's, let's remember we are in a season of KRCC fasting, praying, waiting on God. It's not the time for you to feast. It's time for you to fast. For those who don't fast, when others fast, they will feast. When, they have, when people are fasting, then they will find themselves. Life becomes a tough one when they should have had a breakthrough. You, must, you should enjoy the power of a corporate anointing power of a corporate being together praise the lord so join us we're in the season of fast and praying and you know the prayer points for this week is loaded on krcc website make sure you get it talking of krcc website you should also take advantage krcc have just created an app where you can watch krcc tv even when you are not home you can watch krcc tv make sure you go to app store and other stores and download krcc tv app or you can just type krcc tv dot tv and download the app if you don't download it for anything download it for the free uh recording from pastor matthew 404 scriptures on healing health and long life because what you hear constantly affects your life amen you continue to hear you will live 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 your spirit believes it and it comes to pass shout amen. amen so let me encourage you to be part of the praying the fasting of chaos which leads us on we've been in morning glow since march 23rd 2020 so morning glow continues every morning from monday to friday but during this period of waiting on god and fast and prayer we are also uh, praying in the evenings on Monday nights, when X, Wednesday night, and when again, Friday night, and then Sunday. And talking about Sunday night, tonight is the night of all round breakthrough. All round breakthrough. I am believing God. Somebody's coming there today, and God's going to give them an uncommon breakthrough. So don't miss the evening service. Tonight is the night of all round breakthrough all round breakthrough it's going to be great it's going to be powerful you will be blessed you will be favored hand of the lord will be stretched in jesus name praise the lord i said praise the lord the next service which holds by 11 if you're not if you don't have somewhere you're rushing to you should be in it it's a powerful one engaging the miraculous through the word engaging the miraculous through the word now for you who street people last sunday your message was different but today you can enjoy this one you can be part of it engaging the miraculous through the word i preached on the word last sunday in prayer city about the importance of word and season god guiding your step based on the word and season and so today is how do i engage the miraculous through the word. Some say through the word. That woman made room for the word of God. She built a room for Elisha. And because the word came into her house, challenges could not stay. Barrenness could not stay because the word came into her house. Engaging the miraculous through the word. It's going to be awesome. 11 a.m. service will be awesome. Evening service or on breakthrough will be great. Praise the Lord. How many are looking forward to the International Gathering of Champions? Give God praise for it. This year's International Gathering of Champions will be absolutely awesome. The speakers are ready. We are ready to receive. Each of those speakers are worth flying from abroad to come and hear. You live in the United Kingdom. You should take the time off work. Don't say, I'll be coming from work. You cannot fully engage IGOC that way. Take the time off work. Be at all the sessions. Pastor Deepo Luyomi will bless us. Pastor Biodo Fatwin will be a blessing. 
uh, Pastor Jerry Aze will be a blessing. Uh, Tudor Bismarck will bless you. Praise God. Um, Mensa Otterbill will bless you. Bill Winston, Bishop Jakes will be a blessing. So get ready. Get ready to receive. It's going to be heaven on earth. I said heaven on earth. And then there's going to be great worship. We wouldn't put all the worship at the last day, which is the buzz. We'll, there'll be great worship all through the whole meetings. Amen. So look forward to a great time in the name of Jesus. This morning's message and the next service message is part of a whole series I want to do for the next one year, which is called Your Best Life Now. Your Best Life. Don't suspend your best life. Desire it now. Be hungry for it. Live your best life now. You will not live in regrets. Rather, you will look back and you will be glad for what God has done in your life. Shout amen. amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh, looks like they have Noah's Ark activity. All right, we're going to play Noah's Ark video and then bring the service to a close. Noah's Ark video and bring the service to a close. I'm here to help Noah's Ark to deliver food to people. I'm happy to help them because let's say if I were them and I needed something, then they'll be able to help me. People that we have come here have been homeless, homeless and um, they come with very limited money, they don't have anything and actually one of the first things we have to do is do a food package. This package that we get from you is like an rounder and very good um, and generally on a month to month basis it really supports the customers that we have here. The people it goes to uh, they're under pressure and uh, it helps them and they really appreciate it. So uh, it's a blessing, blessing to be involved and it's, it's a blessing to take part in God blessing others. Praise the Lord. So it's been two years and how many months now? Three months since we've been doing this. And it's taught families, thousands and thousands and thousands of bags of food every week. We celebrate all of you who are so specifically towards this. I will pray blessings on your life and the grace of God to increase for you, Jesus' name. We'll continue to do it until there's no need to do it in the land. I don't know when that will be. You know. <laughs> you know sometimes uh, we consider the West as the first world, but you find that poverty does not know which world. Lack does not know which world. And we pray breakthrough for people. If you're joining us for the first time or first time ever, don't rush away. Please make sure you come to the front. There's a guest welcoming team waiting to welcome you. And if you're online, we celebrate to appreciate the fact that you were blessed by today's service. For those of you who are still doing virtual, I don't know what you are doing virtually about. So you should be virtually in here. Praise God. COVID is gone in this house. There may be residues of it out there, but not in this house. In the name of Jesus. So we look forward to seeing you. Get out of your house. Come. Don't stay in the little, little corners. Come and receive from the Lord. You know, there's power in fellowship. We celebrate all the women who joined us for, wow, last uh, Thursday. If you were there and you were blessed give God praise for it it was awesome what we taught people was why they should be wealthy on the 2nd of July we'll be teaching how to create the wealth invest in your own self and be the one to be blessed be the one to be empowered may the Lord bless you the Lord keep you the Lord make his face shine on you 
give you peace bless your going out bless your coming in may the hand of the Lord always be on your life goodness will not cease from your house the faithfulness of God will not leave you I, de I declare and decree into your life that the doors of favor open for you some trust in chariots some trust in horses our trust is in the Lord as you trust in the Lord you will not be put to shame rather you will have testimony you will have the glory of the Lord you will have the power of the Lord second Kings chapter 6 verse 17 and Elisha prayed and said Lord open the servants eyes and he looked and saw the hill full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha from today may God open your eyes to see the victories around you may God open your eyes to see the angels with sword drawn to defend you may God open your eyes may this season be a season of testimony a season of glory a season of power a season of testimony in Jesus name any health issue that came to this building with you we command your deliverance receive total health in the name of Jesus God bless you. We'll see you either in the next service, but particularly in the evening service. God bless, God bless, God bless. All that you have done, I sing hallelujah. All that you are doing, I sing hallelujah. All that you will do, hallelujah. Sing hallelujah unto the Lord. All that you have done, I sing hallelujah. All that you are doing, I sing hallelujah. All that you would do, I sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. We're glad you watched today's service. For prayer, call 020-8525-0000 or text to share your testimony. Prayer works at Prayer City. See you next time.